Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. Welcome to another edition of My Morning Coffee, where the conversation is always hot, bold, and full of flavor and organic. We can't forget organic. Oh, my God. So listen, it's almost Thanksgiving. And um, even if you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, whatever it is that you celebrate, whatever this winter season is bringing you, Let's find out what is in Miss Gia's cup. Morning, y'all. I have coffee in my cup. Why do you have coffee in your cup, Miss Gia? Um, you might think I have coffee in my cup because normally, I, you know, I say I'm tired or whatever. But I'm not tired this morning. Actually, I um, I'm up. I got up kind of early today. Um, yeah. I had a package delivered and the, they rang the doorbell like at 730. I ain't never known the um, United States Postal Service to be at your house at 730 with a package in the morning. So that was kind of a first for me. So I was like, oh, OK, that's how we're doing it. But I'm glad my package arrived. Um, so I'm up. So I'm just drinking coffee because, you know, I like coffee um, and it's in the morning. So I figured I have some coffee, you know, so my morning coffee. That is which is so odd that it shows up early when right now the postal service is having an issue getting mail to people at any point in time. Some people haven't even been getting their mail in like a week. I know. Two. I know. I've sent packages and it's taken a week and over a week to get to some places. So I was surprised, but um, I'm excited uh, that I got my package. Um, Are you going to tell us what was in the box? Um, it was, um, it was a custom hat hmm. that, um, that I got made for myself. Um, and I got it. I, this is how I rationalized the purchase. <laughs> I said, Oh, it's going to be a birthday gift for me. So it's like an early birthday gift. That's how I justified in my mind, um, to buy the hat. The hat is, is the hat is banging. I should have brought it down and had it on, but I wonder, I think I was, I'm trying to wait cause I want to wear it, you know, for my birthday, I'm doing my birthday month, which is coming up. So, um, you know, so I don't want to like have it on halfway, have it on. I want to like have it on, have a little outfit and be like ready, you know, just be right, you know, stuff, you know, stuff. So, yeah. Um, so when y'all see me in the streets in it, y'all be like, oh, is that Gia? Yeah. You know, I might not. I don't know because I had it so bad. I might be like on celebrity status when I wear it. So I might respond that kind of way. You know how celebrities do it. You know, I, I might be kind of like 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 kind of up, like up here, like, you know, that kind of thing and stuff. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to see what you know. So, but if you see me in the streets with it, like I said, though, I did a post about it. Y'all just throw me a nod, you know, and stuff and, you know, and everything and you know, that kind of thing. So I'm excited. Uh, actually it's, um, a brother, Mr. Uh, Brian Forbes, uh, from Northern California, from your town, Tanya, hey. from your town. Um, uh, actually, uh, made the hat. He's a hat maker. He has some nice, nice stuff. So, um, when I wear it, of course, I'll post it and I'll tag him and um and you know, y'all y'all be able to go and um check him out and get his hats, you know, and stuff like that. But um it's really nice. So and um it's my favorite print. If y'all know if y'all know me, y'all know what that print is. It's so, camouflage, y'all. It's camouflage. Yeah, so yeah. So what um color? what color camouflage? It's like the it's like the traditional the greens okay. and, and tans and stuff. So that's you know, so yeah, that's what was in the box. But yeah, so um so no, back to my that's my cup. I was just you know I like coffee. Well, I'm not really a coffee kind of sewer, y'all. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I don't like I like pretend really because I don't really like strong coffee. I my I really like coffee in my cream, so to speak. And um, since we're on this whole what's in my cup type thing, the whole coffee thing came about for me. I'm not really I'm not really a coffee drinker, but when I was a kid, my grand it was something that me and my grandfather did, and that's probably why I drink coffee to this day. We would have coffee. Um, we would have toast and grapefruit, a slice mm -hmm. of grapefruit in the morning. So, um, so that's kind of how I, when I think about coffee, it's my, I guess me paying homage to my grandfather, something that him and I did. And as a kid, you know, when you're a kid, you don't know no better and stuff. I used to take my toast and dip it in my coffee and then eat my toast, you know, and stuff, you know, with kids, we do some crazy stuff when we, when we kids and stuff. So, um, so yeah, so, um, so that's it. I've just got coffee. Um, listen, you, you're being a little coy. You know, when, when we talk about what's in your cup, we talk about what you've been up to and you have not shared any of your weekend 
or what you've been up to with the people. So I'm expecting you to share a little bit more because you okay. need to eat more than me. And <laughs> let's talk about it. <laughs> let's talk let's, about it. Let's talk about um, the weekend. Actually, I had I had a very eventful and fun field and heart field um, weekend. Um, I started off, we, uh, I was invited to a Friendsgiving. Um, so I attended this Friendsgiving event on um, Saturday, which was beautiful. Um, and it was with my sorority sisters. So um, Tanya, you were there. <laughs> so yeah, um, but let me tell you about, about the Friendsgiving, the whole thing. For me, it was, it was, I don't know, Tanya, I felt like being there, I felt like I was like the cool, the cool sister, the cool big sister, the cool auntie. I, I kind of felt that way, you know, because everybody there, we're all sorority sisters and stuff. And at the time I was like the senior, I was the, you know, the oldest sorority sister in, you know, in the group. So I kind of was feeling, you know, I was kind of feeling kind of, at first I was kind of like, ah, you know, but then, then I said, oh, you know what, this is really special. I felt honored to be invited. And I guess it was really special for me because I watched all you guys kind of grow up. So that's why I kind of feel like I was a cool auntie or a cool big sister, because, you know, I, I met a lot of, a lot of you guys when y'all was, you know, fresh out of high school and college uh, and leaving your mama's house, thinking you're grown and, and joining our organization. And, and you know, y'all went from wearing, you know, being in paraphernalia all the time and going to the, to the dances on, on the campuses to these beautiful women who are bosses, you know, who have, who have advanced degrees, uh, principals, teachers, uh, you know, PR specialists, you guys are doing so many, you know, great things. So to watch you guys grow, you know, grow, I was just like, wow, look at that. I remember when they were wet behind the ears and they didn't comb their hair right and and they weren't matching and all that kind of stuff. And and it's to see you guys um and just be be amongst you guys. I was sex, I couldn't stay long because I had a concert to go to. But the little time I did spend, it was it was really um it was really good. Some people we I haven't seen since the pandemic, you know, when the pandemic happened, we, we ain't been able to socialize in public and all that kind of stuff. So it was good seeing, you know, old familiar faces and stuff. And um, and just just being in you guys' presence, because you guys are all, to me, I, I'm proud of every all of you guys and everything that um, you guys have done and continue to do. So it just, it was just, I, I just, I left there feeling good um, to, to going to the concert. So after I left there, you know, I went to see Music Soul Child out there in Anaheim at the Grove, you know, so I was in Orange County. Um, and, um, you know, they said we supposed to wear our mask, right? <laughs> and we supposed to have our mask on at the, during the whole concert, right? Girl, why ain't nobody in there had no mask on? <laughs> I said, see, this is when you know you're in Orange County, because they just don't care. They just like, well, we're going to do whatever the hell we want to do, because that's how we do it and stuff. But um, the concert was, was good. Um, it was kind of short. I was, I wanted a little bit more, but you know, I guess nowadays we, I, you're going to get what you can get. Right. Um, so I was like, you know, come on, you know, you got like, you, you've been around for 20 years, you know, music. I, I need a little bit, you know, more and stuff. And then, um, we had some, we had some okay seats, but the thing about when you be in the, in the front, like we went in the front front, but we were like maybe the fourth row in front. Well, you know, all these people, they all excited about music. So everybody standing up. So you know, here I am, like, look, mm -hmm. I, I ain't like twenty no more. I need to, I need to get my rest, right? You know, I need, I need to sit down a little bit. So you know, everybody standing up all in front of you, so you can't see music on the stage. So now you got to stand up and everything. And you know, like, like my feet hurt. And I'm like, come on now, y'all, sit down, sit down, sit down. This but, is the thing about going to old, I won't say older, more seasoned artists um, that uh, target a older demographic, mm -hmm. contemporary, whatever you want to call it, like. We should be sitting in our seats. Like I'm, I'm confused on why you was that excited. I don't even think he didn't drop a new album. So you're that excited about the new album, and now my feet gotta hurt in order to see. Right, right. to see. Right, right. So, um, so yeah. So you know, it was, it was, you know, good. He was good. Um, uh, he, you know, he, he, he did good. Uh, considering he didn't have any, he didn't have an opening act, so it was just. You know, you get there, had a little DJ outside. Then it's like, okay, the concert started. Bam. You know, he come on stage. He do his thing. And it's like, okay, I'm out, you know, and stuff. So, so but it was good to get out uh, on a little date. We had like, I guess, a little date night. Um, 
we went out with some other couples. So, you know, get a little couple thing, that kind of thing and stuff. So that was good. And uh, let me see what else. And on yesterday, I didn't actually, I did nothing. Nothing. I didn't go anywhere. I'm not going to say I didn't do anything. I didn't go out the house. I was in the house. Actually, I was uh, creating. I was in my little creative space and um, I'm creating some stuff and trying to straighten up a little bit. Cause um, you know, I got a, I got an assignment and I got to get some pictures of my, uh, my space and, and me and my space. And um, so I got to clean it up so I can get some pictures. So that's like a chore. And can um, we share any of your um, assignment, upcoming assignment with the audience so that. No, we can't, we can't share. No, we can't share it just yet. But um so, yeah, I'm trying to get ready for that because I got to get these pictures, you know, and stuff. And I got to get pictures of me. And so I was like, oh, you know, and that's not really that's not so really here's the thing for our fashionistas out there. Stay tuned. OK, because we got something hot coming out from Miss Gia and she don't always like to share or brag. So I'll be happy to do it for her when the time is right. But know that. There's something fire coming real soon. Um, partnership with a big name. So we can't, obviously can't reveal now. But I want y'all to start learning how to drop snippets so people can at least know something is coming up. Because I think we get, you know, we start expecting the same thing from the same people. And sometimes we tune in, sometimes we do not. But know that um, get something's coming. So stay tuned. Make sure you follow on social media and you will be pleasantly surprised at what comes out of uh, the work that Miss Gia is doing. So yeah, so you were up getting ready for it. Get ready. Well, yeah, I was, you know, I was trying to, you know, I got to straighten up because, you know, I got to get the pictures right. And you was like, oh, I'm going to come take some pictures of you, right? I'm like, oh, Lord, Tanya coming over to the house. I got to clean up the creative space. And I really got to clean up because Jeff, you know, Jeff, he be getting all upset. You need to clean up and stuff. And I'd be like, look, we family. You know, Tanya don't care that, you know, it's a box right there. Jeff, Jeff is giving you orders when he hasn't redone our, um, he Tell hasn't redone our opening like he was supposed to. So just in case you guys didn't know, her husband is, a model slash actor slash voiceover. And if you were here at the beginning of the pod in the previous season, you would know that Jeff did our um, opening and it was freaking amazing. So then he does this opening and doesn't have his voice at all. He doesn't do use his voice at all. That's his tool. That might be other than his beard, the best thing about him. And then he gives us nothing. Like yeah. I'm going to make, we need to make sure that Jeff recognizes the fact that he has not allowed for us to exploit his talents at this point. Exactly. So he's slipping. So it's we'll, okay to exploit your talents, right? For bit for the for the right benefit. So well, I'm not exactly sure what uh, Jeff was thinking, but he wasn't he wasn't thinking right. I know. Now. What we need y'all to do is y'all need to go to his page, <laughs> and y'all need to say, "What's up with the intro? What's up with my morning uh, podcast intro?" Okay, you know, put him on blast like that. You know. <laughs> Oh, uh oh, hey. <laughs> oh, there's Jeff. He's, he's actually watching. <laughs> so, yeah, with that being said, it, it sounds like there's been a lot in your cup, even though you were a little reluctant to share. But I do want to, I'm going to have to post some pictures or you can go look on her social. But Miss Gia's outfit on Saturday was popping. Was that Saturday? Yes, it, it was Saturday. absolutely amazing. Like she made green look better than any AKA I've ever seen in green. So let's just take some time, head over to Miss Gia's social media and check out that green fit she had on. It was everything. That's probably why she didn't want to stand up at the Music Soul Child concert because her feet was probably hurting in them bomb ass boots she was wearing. But for the record, the outfit was on point. Okay, it was on point. So when well, she did show up, time, yeah. when she did show up at the Friendsgiving, they started taking pictures of her like they was the paparazzi. And we, you know, we've seen Gia and some stuff, but she was on it. Like she had us young people looking scraggly, okay? Looking like our mamas would have sent us back home to get changed cuz girl, look, look, incredibly underdressed. It was uh, absolutely <laughs> amazing. So with that uh, being said, Let's talk about age. So she said she was the oldest one there. Yeah, she was. But 
older people have a lot to teach us sometimes. And um, let me tell you, she definitely teaches you how to work a fit without having to show all your ass sets, right? <laughs> Lessons. Oh, Tanya, you're so crazy, girl. You're so crazy. But no, uh, uh, yeah, you know, I try every now and then. You know, I try to step out every now and then. But, you know, um, you, like you said, I'm, I'm not good about bragging about myself. So um, I'd rather brag about other people and things like that. But every now and then I do, um, you know, I put some clothes on and and uh, I go on out there and do my thing and stuff. So, um, yeah. So but I'm going to uh, elicit you because you're going to be helping me with this little photo thing because, you know, I got to put a little makeup on this. I, I got to look pretty. <laughs> so we say. might need to call Ryan in as a matter of fact I might need to tap into our sisterhood right, right. Matters, um, about that whole situation but like I said you guys be on the lookout because it's, it's going to be a hot drop coming soon for Miss Gia I'm so excited for her I'm excited for the show because we have her uh, and it's, it's about to be a good 2022 yeah yeah oh yeah for sure for sure so um Speaking of what's in our cup, what's in your cup, um, Tanya? Because your, your cup is always, you always got something in your cup. Well, we have the same cup today. So yes. a little bit of the same um, recovering from, but I like coffee, right? A little bit of the same uh, coffee, tired, got a lot going on. Want to make sure I'm hitting on all cylinders today. Spent some time with the husband yesterday. We hung out. 49 I 49ers won, Warriors won. I want to get into. Did you get? Did you watch the um, Lakers in their kerfluffle last night? Uh, no, I didn't watch the Lakers last night because again, I was upstairs trying to um, get some product out. I was trying to actually. I, I'm working on some stuff for you. Um, it's it's here. It's and it's coming out. You know and uh, <laughs> you know stuff. So, um, but um, and then I had I had some you know I had I got you know had a few little clients I got to get their stuff done too but no I didn't get to watch the um the Lakers and I haven't really been watching them because they ain't been doing you know they're not the Lakers of of yesteryears let's just say that <laughs> okay well, listen, yesterday if you haven't watched it check check out the kerfluffle that took place I would love your feedback because it's interesting how you know people that just hate LeBron is like punish him. People that love LeBron is like, oh my God, you can't, you better not. It was an accident. So I would love to hear. Okay. Okay. Work. Okay. Let, you know what? See, you don't start at something now. Okay. I'm a Laker fan. Okay. But I necessarily, I ain't going to say, you know, but I did hear, I don't know if it's on the news or something, Something happened at the game, right, or something, and and LeBron did something, right? Did he do something? He, you, okay. So you, when you're playing defense, you have to box out, right? Box okay, out, but you know he used his whole forearm to box out a player, popped him in his face, blood everywhere. Dude was trying to fight him. It went down, but they didn't. They wound up not fighting at all. Okay, um, because. You know, there's too many people. It's not going to happen. You're not fighting LeBron James. And if you let Gilbert Arenas tell it, you ain't fighting LeBron. You ain't fighting KD. You ain't fighting the two light-skinned boys from uh, the Bay, Clay and uh, Steph. So it was a lot of fuss, I think, over nothing. But okay. it was bleeding. And one of the things that I was talking to Ray about is, you know, when you start tasting your own blood, I think it makes you act a certain kind of way. And I think the the more he was tasting his blood dripping down his eyes into his mouth, I think it kind of sparked a little something. Well, so you yeah. can definitely see where he would get uh, well, a little you more. You know accurate. what? Maybe it was that time. Or maybe people just tired and sick of LeBron's um, shit. Maybe it could be a little bit of that. Let's you know. Let, let's just be real about it. Everybody ain't everybody ain't team LeBron, okay? And everybody know that LeBron be doing some shit. Uh, and he be getting away with some stuff, and we all know he a little he a little crybaby. Okay, he be crying and whining and stuff about some stuff. So maybe homeboy was just like, you know what? I you know look, he might be like, look, hey, I don't get, I don't get, you are LeBron James. I'm I'm such and such, you know, and and hey, I'm a, I'm gonna break it, you know, stuff. I don't know what I'm saying, you know, everybody ain't giving a man a pass, you know, and and 
hey, I don't know. I didn't see it, but I'm just saying, you know, it could be a little bit of that, but you could be right. You know, he probably was like, wait a minute, I'm bleeding. Wait a minute. You know how you know how you get that delay reaction? Oh <laughs> hell no. You know that kind of thing, like, wait a minute, what just a little elbow? It's like that must he got me bleeding. That's you know, so it's like, okay, I'm bleeding. That bleed, that's kind of like that's fighting. You know, it's like you made me bleed. Oh. So, so listen, coming coming from a perspective of a mom that has a son that's a little stronger than he knows, there's times where I've had to tell Royce, like, dude, you're hurting, you're hurting her. He thinks he's playing or mm -hmm. just being um whatever active. And he's over here choking the mess out of his sister or leaning on her too hard. Now she got a bruise. Sometimes maybe people don't really recognize their own strength. Yeah. I, but LeBron's always been a very physical specimen. But I still don't. I think there's times where he doesn't recognize how strong he actually is, how his little short, quick moves can apply more pressure than the next person that does the same thing. Listen, I'm not I, taking up for him. I'm just I saying. I don't know, Tanya. It, it was a little it sound, extra. It, it sounds like, you, sound like you're getting soft for your old age or, or, or mommy done took over because you like, kind of like you try to make excuses for LeBron. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Listen, all I'm saying was it was very dramatic, okay? It didn't have to okay. be all that. It was just a lot of, it was super Well, you dramatic. know. It's a lot of frustration right now with the Lakers. They, you know, they, they ain't doing well, and everybody frustrated about everybody. So it could be a little bit of that, and it just showed up on the on the court and stuff because, you know, I'm frustrated with them and everything, but I ain't going to be going and, you know, elbowing you, Tanya, or nothing like that or stuff like that. I'm just like, you know, oh, I'm going to pray about it, and hopefully uh, <laughs> things will turn around and <laughs> stuff. But, uh yeah, we you know I know we're not doing good and stuff. So right now, and I know that's making you feel really good because your little Bay Area team. Um, but you know, I'm I'm a I'm a Cur I'm a Steph Curry, the whole Curry family fan. So I ride with them. You know, them my peoples. Uh, Aisha, that's my girl. You know, uh, the kids like them them my them my nieces. They don't know it. And my nephew, they don't know it. But hey, so I'm you know I'm all, I'm all with the Currys and stuff. So and I like you know I like the team you know Golden State they, they cool and, and everything and stuff but I don't you know. have to hate on the Lakers for the Warriors to cheer for the Warriors that's almost like right. Black Lives Matter I don't have to hate on white people to support black people okay right right I don't hate on the Lakers they're just not my team and exactly. they will never be my team okay no matter where I live but. I also just support California sports, right? I live in California. Yes. I love my love my state. I don't want to see none of them do bad. Like I hate when the Clippers look like stepchildren. They're like the stepkids of California. They're well, they, they are though. They are though, Tony. They are. But I don't like that. That's like embarrassing. Okay. Like, well, get... well, see, that's the thing. They should have stayed wherever they were. You know, they tried. You know, they came to LA. You know, I'm a Laker fan. You know, hey, and the Clippers. Well, you know, they in LA. But you know, I'm like, mm, you know, no, uh, you know, I'm I'm always gonna roll with the, you know, the purple and gold. That's just that's just how it is. But um, you know, um, so Miss Mary King, I love her. I, I, we got to talk about her one day. But okay. This, naturally, we should probably just have her on. She's like the leadership whisperer, the DNI whisperer. She's amazing. So. I got to introduce you to her one day, but okay. she asked, does the kerfluffle help LeBron's image or hurt it? Did he sell more jerseys? I suspect he did. From a PR perspective, does that help him? Well, here's my thoughts on that. Of course, people like drama. People like clickbait. They like to cheer for the champ. And in that moment where he made someone else bleed, he looks like the hero. Again, how do you look like the hero when you're insulting someone? I have no idea. But that's kind of the society that we are living in right now. So yeah. of course, now everybody's like, oh, run. Ah. And no one's going to, no one challenges him. So the guy that challenged him, he's going to wind up getting the bad press, the bad PR about it. Commentator What's the guy's person, name? Say that again. What's the guy's name? Girl, I forgot. I got to look that up. See, okay. that ain't even right. I, I should do better. But commentators are going to have LeBron's name all in their mouth like they always do, but even more so now they're going to talk about him good, bad, or otherwise no press is bad press when it comes to keeping your name in the media. And 
Now he can do the whole redeem myself and go on his press tour and the Lakers are going to talk about him. And you know, Magic Johnson's going to come out and say something about it, which then continuously adds more clicks right. and more interest to the story. Then it's how do you redeem yourself? Then it's him showing how amazing he is. And that wasn't intentional. Also, the clip did show after he did it, he went back and tried to help, right? Even though um, the guy was on the ground, he was mad. Yeah, so, oh, so it's one of these kind of things. I'm going to punch you, make you bleed. Then I'm going to think about it. Oh, oh, let me, let me, the, the, let on, bro. Bro. Act like I'm, I'm helping him and stuff. And if I'm bleeding, I'm be like, you better get the hell out of my face. That's probably how that, how that guy was feeling and stuff. But so, you are also an officer. So if you were, okay, so Officer Sneed, if you are in the field and you are doing your job and a suspect assaults you, do you then, and then he says, I'm sorry. And then he says, I'm sorry, right? He assaults you or he throws something at you. And then he says, oh, my bad, Officer Sneed. What is your what is your reaction? Do you then say, okay, he's sorry. He didn't mean to do that. Hold on, let me, let me go on and give him a pass. Or do you approach the situation like this fool assaulted an officer? See, Tanya, now you, you know what well, you you know you know you ain't right with that question. Okay? I gotta ask. See, see, because I'm Gia before I'm the officer. <laughs> so it's like see, I can't this is supposed to be a, a nice show. You're gonna have me cussing on the show and stuff. Because see, that's my thing. That's what people understand about police work. Okay, you out here trying to do your job. And and, and let's just say he hit me. And he apologized. After he hit me. No, no, no. I'm gonna call you some names, okay? And I'm I'm punching you back. I'm sorry. I'm hitting you back. And then I'm gonna say, Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm gonna do the same thing that he did, you know. But I'm not, you know, not, you know. And I understand when people get heated. You know, you you get caught up sometime in the moment and stuff like that. And LeBron probably is sorry. But the thing is, my thing is, why is the, the other guy come, gonna? come out look like the bad person when LeBron was the one who made the man bleed. I know he didn't probably do it intentionally, but he did. But then again, he maybe he did. We don't know because there could be some beef or something. Maybe the, the guy said some shit about LeBron while he was coming down the court or something, you know, and LeBron got mad. You know how, you know how, you know how in sports and stuff, they be talking shit. You know, they do. And, and maybe he said something to LeBron was like, okay, I'm going to show this, you know, and bam. And then make it seem like, oh, it's kind of like, a, you know, an accident, that kind of thing. But, you know, I don't know. And because I didn't see it, I'm just here. I just heard about it briefly. You know, it was on the news. I wasn't watched. I just heard it. And I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. But again, like you said, LeBron's going to come out as the, as the good person. And this other guy, you know, the media is going to go in on this other guy, which I think is kind of wrong. And I, so I think a lot of this stuff, the media plays a lot into how we feel about these people sometimes too. Because like, they take you know, advantage, they exploit yeah, you know, our emotional connection to um, these players in the game. Uh, Miss Mary, they are building a huge stadium in Las Vegas. Wonder if the Clippers will move. Many are betting they will. No, I they won't. They because won't. they're about to get the the stadium here. They build the stadium, the stadium here. Yeah, and that Steve Steve what's his name Steve Bomber guy. Yeah. Yeah, he 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 love L.A. You know, he's he he's one of you know he docked the bus reincarnated, so to speak. You know, so I think that's he what he is tried to be determined to flip L.A. So when you yeah. have someone, even if the task is monumental and they have the money for it, they're gonna pour all that they have into that mission that they have. And I think at this moment, as long as he owns the team, he yeah. is definitely set on flipping L.A. Yeah, I don't think it will ever happen. And I think he's fine with whatever strides that the team takes to be able to uh, be reputable. But um, yeah, I don't think they're going. You know, okay, what if they? You ownership. know what? I wouldn't be surprised if he he might even change the name to the Inglewood Clippers. He might. You know that that's how that's how set that's how they said he is. On like you said, on flipping things. So he might even change the script up and and hey, we're gonna be calling them Inglewood Clippers. Because he look, he buying up. Look, he buying up everything. You know what I was thinking? Maybe, he, maybe he go, maybe he gets in bed with um, Mayor Butts and comes up with something like that. Well, I think he, I think he already in bed. Mm. I think he already in bed with him. It's a lot of people in the bed with him, but I think Steve might be kicking some people out the bed, and this might just be. 
and we still keep it in the bed pretty soon. That's I'm just saying, you know, don't you know, y'all don't be out there quoting me going to tell the mayor that I said this and stuff like that. You know, don't do that, y'all. You know. No, we got to tell it so he'll want to come back on the show and let us yeah, know. Yeah, you know, so I don't know. He might not want to come back on, you know. I, I think I think I made him mad. I don't know. I don't know. But <laughs> So listen, while we are on um, a law enforcement topic, the the verdict that came down from the Kyle Ritter house, Rittenhouse, oh, this kid. What, what were your thoughts on that? Did you, did well, you give it to be you, I was, I, okay, I didn't give a, um, you know, that word, that F word. First of all, but no, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't really following it to be honest with you. Like I, like I said before, I don't know if you guys who watch the show, even though I'm a law enforcement officer, a lot of times I don't follow all this stuff in the media because it just, it's, it's sickening. And if you do it, you know, I've been doing this job for 30 years. So sometimes the stuff that's out there, that's put out there, it, it sickens me. So I just choose not to really watch a lot of it. So I didn't really watch it. I was just hearing, you know, then, you know, little bits and pieces. And then when it was over it, and then they was going to deliberate and stuff like that. And I heard it came back with a not guilty um, verdict and stuff. So I really can't chime in because I didn't watch the trial. I, 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 I don't have a good assessment of, cause I didn't see what was going on in the courtroom and stuff like that. But however, you know, I'm not surprised. Uh, and nobody is surprised probably, you know, and stuff that it, it came out that way. Cause I don't even know what the jury pool was made up of. Um, so that had, that plays a lot. That has a lot to do, play and to do with how the outcome of some of this stuff is really the jury pool. And people don't want to talk about that, but that that's the real thing. And it should be talked about. Um, and I heard, I don't know if it was, I came in yesterday and the TV was on and I think, uh, I don't know if it was his mom or somebody was on the news on some show and she was saying how he he feels, he has remorse, he feels really bad. And he said something about if this would ever happen again, he wouldn't, he wouldn't go there. Uh, like he wouldn't do that again. I'm like, yo, well, you damn right you wouldn't because you, you, you know, you know, it's like, it's, you know, I got to laugh when I heard that. I'm thinking, get the hell out of here talking about, you know. Yeah, he knows he wouldn't do that again because he knows that if he did it again, it would he won't he won't probably get a not not guilty verdict or you know it'll be a different outcome. So to sit back and say, oh, I, you know, I'm remorseful and I wouldn't I wouldn't do that again. I, I don't really I don't really buy that. You know, I don't buy that that part of him and stuff. Um, because again, he, didn't he drive from like a whole bunch of states over to get there? It wasn't like he was that was his neighborhood. He just happened to be walking out there in his neighborhood. He got in his car. With intentions to drive there and you know i don't care what his justification was he was trying to help out or do whatever and stuff since when do we need do they, they they need his help okay first so here's, so here's my assessment no i wasn't surprised i did watch it i followed it there was only one person of color on the jury okay, okay. um there's been a, a mess since they've started even jury selection the judge Definitely had his finger on the scale of justice. It was incredibly disgusting the way that he led the courtroom. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, he led them into that verdict. Yeah. And then the most disturbing thing for me in all of this, and no one seems to be talking about this, is why this boy's mother has absolutely no repercussions applied to her for any of this because. He was a minor. She's the one that drove him. So if nothing else, there oh, should be so she of, drove him. Yes, there okay. should be some type of child endangerment um, go, charges applied to her because he is a minor and you are responsible for him. So all of this has taken place based on the fact that you decided as a parent to do this. I also, this, this might be slightly controversial, but looking at the Travis Scott situation and that young boy that passed away, your dad took you to that concert. Like right. at what point do we start holding parents accountable for the situations that they put their children in? Now, this boy has his own trial, Ritter House, whatever his name is. There's been nothing that has happened to his mother. That is absolutely unacceptable. I think we've become a society that tends to look away from parental obligation. Well, no, we, let's not. No, we haven't become a society to do that. That state has has is doing that because here in California, here in LA, if that would have happened, if you would have drove your son somewhere and did some stuff, trust and believe, they would be having some charges on you too here in 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 California. And I just think uh, what happens here, we we here we have our laws here, and we think the laws here 
are apply everywhere in the United States and they don't. Every state has different laws. So they probably don't have any kind of laws that deal with parental stuff in that little po-bunk town or wherever they're from. Um, I'm sure that 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 could be that has a uh, has a lot to do with it. Because you're right. I didn't know the mama drove him there. I thought he drove himself there. But to that puts a whole nother a whole nother dynamic and spin on it for me. If her ass dro drove him there, she is just as much as culpable as he is because you can't tell me you didn't know what he was going to do. That's your kid. He's in the back seat of your car on, on the passenger side. I know y'all talked. That's a long ass ride. Y'all didn't just sit in the car and you just wasn't driving, wasn't saying nothing. Y'all was talking and he was saying some stuff and you were saying some stuff back to him. So you can't sit up here and play innocent and say, oh, I didn't know what he was going to do. Uh, I call bullshit on that, on the mama, whatever her name is. Okay. Uh, so you know you know got me started, Tanya. Because <laughs> I didn't know that. So I was talking to to my kids, and I had tell them I said if you don't go to school regularly, if you're tardy regularly, the state of California will charge me. They will charge me with I can't remember right. the exact yeah. crime, but I am responsible for making sure that you show up at school. Right. I'm responsible for making sure that you stay at school, even if I'm not there. That is my job. And if it doesn't happen. They will knock on my door. My, my kids were gone. Um, this was like two years ago from school for three days. Girl, do you know they called me and was like, um, ma'am, right. yeah, you ain't got no more free days for the rest of this year. What? Right. But you can go take your teenage child with a weapon across state lines and then sit in court and cry. Like yeah. you have something that people should be understanding about i need to understand what they should understand about your behavior as a parent i don't that bothers me that parents are not they are too busy trying to be their kids friends right their kids parents and guidance right it is just out of it's just out of control it's just out yeah, of control. They, and they need to they need to have some responsibility here because they are culpable and so like you said when when are we going to start holding these parents, uh, you know, accountable for the actions that some of their kids, what their kids are doing, especially when they are involved in? It. Like you said, he, she drove him, and then the guy with the, at the concert, you took, you took your son to the concert, and then something happened. So now, you, I'm, I'm sure you probably be the first one in line to try to sue the, the, the poor boy Travis and stuff, but you don't want to took your son there. So, you know, I don't, you know. I don't understand the decisions that people make in regards to their children, and it's not like things are getting safer. Like violent crime is starting to rise everywhere, not not just here or in one or two states. Violent crime is starting to rise everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny you say that. I, at the, I'm going to go back to the concert, the Music Soul Child concert. Um, it was funny that when we got out the car, it was a lady. She had her child with her, a young girl at the concert. And I think she was even younger than um, your daughter, Tanya. And I thought that was kind of odd. I'm like, why is she? Why is this little girl here at this music soul child concert? Because you know, you wasn't no were nowhere near born, uh, nothing, and your mama not even been born when music soul child was uh, was out there, and and they was dressed alike and everything. And I just thought that you know, now that you say that, I was like, wow, you know, it's not like it was new. It was like a little a boy, a little young boy band or something like that. And you take your daughter to it and stuff. This was in a in a, in a grown ass man concert, uh, and. You know, grown, I don't know. Grown but, and sexy, ain't nothing sexy. Yeah, but again, I think, I think about concert. what you said. If something was would have would have happened, or something would have happened to her daughter, then she probably, you know, she would be blaming everybody else, or or you know, trying to blame Music Soul Child for something. But you had your child at this adult, very very adult adult concert. You know, I don't, I don't know. You know, you guys tell me. I you know. I, I, you know, I don't know. I'm not going to the concert with my kids, uh, especially when they, if they're young, not like that. Unless it's, you know, the little, what's the boys who won all the, all the wars last night? Um, BTS, BTS, or BTS, BTS or whatever, unless it's that, that kind of concert. Okay. But I'm not taking, you know, no, my kid, we're not going to see, you know, um, the Ozzy brothers. Uh, you know, we're not, we're not going to see. You know, we're not, we're not, you know, we're not going to see. My mama ain't taking me to the OJs. Yeah, yeah, God. yeah. You know, it's like, no, no uh -uh. I don't give you did grow up on the music. I don't give you did hear your head of music in the background on, on Saturday, cleaning up the house when I was playing it. I'm not taking you to the concert. Like, I'm not taking my child to the trap concert to see the, the, the Migos. I love it. I, you might be hearing it in the, and when I'm, you know, jamming it, but 
nah, mm -mm. if you little, no, we're not going. No, you got to go to grandma's house or auntie house while mama go to the concert. So I'll add a layer to this. So Ray called me once. Him and my cousin were out uh, bar hopping and drinking. And he calls me and he says, there's a kid at the bar. At the bar with the mama. Hmm. Sitting at the bar. See. I was like, so we were just, we tripped out about that for a minute. And it wasn't like a little bit of time. It right. Was for a long, I was like, what is wrong? Where are we, where have we gone left when it comes to parenting? Like there was I don't limits. Know. There was limits. I don't know. There was I don't limits. Know. So I, I do um, want to lean into before we get out of here, uh the weekend again, particularly the friends versary, friendship, friend, what was it? Friends Friendsgiving. 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 It was it was amazing. It was amazing to see you there. It was amazing to have you there. Most importantly, the vibe was just so yes needed yes so i just say that to let everyone know during this holiday season no matter what it is you celebrate get out there and get what you need like whatever that thing is that fills you up that makes you all warm and fuzzy inside go get that right outside of all your obligations what you got to cook where you got to go if you got to work take some time to go get something that feeds your soul um, this holiday season, because that was like freaking incredible outside yeah. of me having to cook and sweating. And now I have to go get a facial because I probably got grease in my face from frying them taco shells. But, but they was good though, Tanya, them taco shit. Look, before I left, I had to get me a taco too. They, they were good though. They was, I ain't gonna lie. They was good, girl. I wanted to take a little to-go plate, but I didn't. They was good. <laughs> to the concert. That <laughs> grease dripping all down your green. Yeah. 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 It was good. It was a good time. It was, it felt good. And I saw someone post about it this week, like yesterday, they just said it was needed. And I think yes, last year and COVID and this whole kerfluffle that we were going through right now socially, it it's important that we get what we need, but it was very filling and refreshing. Like waking yes. up the next day was just like, oh. That was time well spent with good people. And she was very selective in who she invited. Yes. So I think that's okay too. Um, there is a, hmm, she, she was reporting for Black Enterprise and then she writes now for, I think, um, Forbes or Entrepreneur, one of those. And she also has a podcast. Uh, I'll put it on our page, but she had a podcast about not being invited. So this is why I say all that. Okay. If you are not invited to something, be okay with that. There's probably a reason God made sure you was not invited. Maybe mm -hmm. you, something something there was not for you. Maybe mm -hmm. something there was will set you in the wrong direction. But I think people are intentional. Or I, I, I ask that you be intentional. When you have something, be intentional about who you invite just as intentional about who you don't invite. Because if you're trying to have a positive vibe and a good feeling and you feeling kind of shaky about if you should or if you shouldn't invite someone, don't. Yes. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't do that to them and don't do that to you. And don't feel some kind of way if you are not invited to something. There must be a reason. And if we are all searching for our best selves and these positive vibes and these good feelings, don't feel some kind of way when you're not invited to something. I don't. I'm just yeah. like, they knew someone was going to show up that would give me negative vibes and y'all don't want me to have negative vibes. Right, right. So yeah. It's important that you are intentional about who you invite to things and who you don't invite based on what you want that outcome to be. So um, I'm going to, on our page, I'll share that uh, that podcast uh, episode because I, I don't know, she, I can't come, it can't come to my mind right now, but it was great. Like after I heard that, yeah. I was like, I've always felt like that. When you don't invite certain people, there's a reason why. There's a yeah. vibe, there's a feeling that you're trying to get, the outcome that you're trying to get, it's it's the ingredients. Like everybody that was there at the Friendsgiving was an ingredient yes. to a recipe for an amazing outcome. And I believe with all my heart, that is how we ended the night. So yes, uh, thank you, Tari, for hosting. Yes. Thank you, Janetta, for being the visionary. Yes. 
thank you for allowing me in your kitchen to do what I do. And I just, um, you know, love the guest list. I love my little glass that I left with. Yes. Be intentional about your holiday season. Be intentional. I yeah. Don't know. So what do you want to leave them with, Miss Gia? What I want to leave you guys with, you know, check on check on your on your people, you guys. Um, everybody's dealing with stuff, even though and that you don't know that they're dealing with. So during this holiday time, reach out to people, check on them, see how they're doing, because you 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 never know what's going on. And you checking on them could be a thing that could actually save that person or just make that person feel better. So just don't think that everybody, you know, everybody's doing their thing and, and they don't need they don't need to be checked on. They do. So, you know, pick up the phone or text and just say, hey, hello, uh, how you doing and stuff, because this pandemic uh, has taken a toll on a lot of people. And this us not being a bit being around people, it, it has changed people and people we need. You need the contact. So now that we can kind of, you know, be out and, and about, you know, think about having something or think about calling your girlfriend or your boyfriend or whoever, your mama, your cousin, your auntie, and just say, hey, let's let's hang out. Let's go to lunch. Let's go to breakfast. Just do something because, you know, whether they ask for it or not, people need it. Yeah. So, you know, um, that's all I want to leave you guys with is that, you know, reach out and um, touch somebody in some kind of way. So what do you have coming up that you can actually share with everyone and how can they stay in touch with Miss Gia? Well, um, what do I have coming up? Oh, after Thanksgiving is that small business Saturday. I will be vending at the Nothing But Black Flea Market, the Baldwin Hills Crenshaw Mall. So come on out and support myself and all the other vendors that are there. You know, shop a small for the holiday. Um, it, it always puts a smile on a, on a uh, vendor's face when people come and support them, big or small. Just come out and, and show some love. Um, I'll be doing that. And um, hopefully I'll get some invites to um, somebody's house for um, Thanksgiving. Um, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm not cooking, you guys. So don't expect a phone call from me inviting you over because I don't cook. So um, I want that to be clear. And I'm OK with it. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't have no problems with it. And um, matter of fact, I think I might, when I'm over, I might make a shirt that says I don't cook, just, you know, so everybody understands me and they don't they don't start to think that I'm gonna, you know, cook them a meal because I'm not. Um, Tari, my sans Tari used to could use a I don't cook shirt, but she's mm -hmm. been very domesticated lately. Her yeah. kitchen was great. I'm very proud of her, how she's yeah. her own, but I understand. Yeah. I don't yeah, and I don't cook because can I get one that says I don't always want to cook? Well, yeah, you can get that too. And I don't reason why I don't cook is because when you look at you, you think about relationships and stuff like that, I'm all for whoever's better at something, that person should do it the most. Yeah. So Jeff's a better cook than I. So I feel as though it's only it's only right that you know I let him do his thing. He he actually enjoys cooking, you know, and stuff. So you Look, know, we that's ain't asking why. Jeff to make no earrings or nothing, yeah. you know. Right, right, right. Exactly, exactly. See, yeah. so I'm one of those people, I know how to stay in my lane. I, I, I'm i one, I'm a good driver. This is my lane, I, I stays in my lane, you know, and I don't try, you know, like I might like veer over there. I'm only veering this on me to see or listen, but I ain't trying to be over in that other lane. I'm just like, hey, I'm driving. This is my car right here. You need something. You need something cute made. Okay, I got you. You know that that's kind of me. Okay, you need this. You need some style tips. I got you. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. You know, but you want me to make what? Uh, ah, skirt, skirt, skirt. You know, <laughs> out of me. control. <laughs> and they can keep up with you where? Um, on uh, Instagram, um, the Mahogany Box. You can always find me there, or on Facebook. You can find me at the Mahogany Box. Or you can find me on my personal page, um, G and Neil. So that, that's, you know, I'm only there. I know I'm supposed to be getting on other places, according to Tanya, but I'm not that quite there yet. I'm not, I'm on LinkedIn, but I'm not really on LinkedIn. Um, I have an account, but I'm not active on it because I don't know, it's a little learning curve. But look, I do want to get on TikTok, y'all. So if y'all can help a sister out, I'm one of those people, I'm one of old fashioned learners. Y'all got to write some shit down for me. Okay. And give it to me some step-by-step -step instructions on how I can do these little TikTok things. And then I can get on TikTok and have me a little TikTok video and stuff, you know, some kind of things like that. So I, I'm, I think in 2022, 
I'm gonna try to work on TikTok a little bit better, but by then they probably on some other kind of thing. But you know, I'm always late to the party, but it doesn't matter. You know, like they say, you don't gotta be first, you know, you just gotta show up eventually. Just be you know, you know. Just be right, exactly. Yeah. So um, so yeah, so no, I'm not on I'm on TikTok. I got an account, but I don't I don't be, you know, I don't know what I'm doing on there, not just yet, but I'm gonna get it. Don't worry, I'm gonna get it because your girl ain't gonna be left behind. I'm just a little late sometimes. Um, so yeah, and um but yeah, you know, Facebook and um, Instagram is where you can find me. Or you can find me on Saturday at the Nothing But Black Flea Market from 11 to um, 5. Love it. I'll be there. Love it. Mm -hmm. So it's Monday. So you will find me at 4 o'clock Pacific, 7 o'clock Eastern. I'm doing my tea time on LinkedIn and YouTube with my PR friends. So anyone that's looking to kind of figure out if they need PR in their life, in their business, it's a great place, a great time to just go listen in. I have different practitioners from different sectors of the industry. They practice in different spaces, medical, nonprofit, entertainment, law. All of these industries need PR, but it doesn't necessarily mean your business needs it. Or maybe you do. So show up. We have a good time. And we also talk about hot topics because like we did earlier, you know, we talk about the LeBron thing from a PR perspective. How does that work? How do you tell that story? Do you tell that story from um, maybe how does Nike tell that story? Because he is a Nike athlete. What about other companies and other brands that he represents? How do they step into the spotlight? and respond to what has gone on because that's one of their athletes or do they right how does his personal um, publicist work and spin this story spin story tell call it what you like we go over things like this in our tea time on linkedin and youtube and the cool thing is we give you tips too on how you can look at your own story and talk about it from different perspectives what is newsworthy so that's really what I'm, I've been working on for the last couple of months is really helping people understand what public relations is and do, does your business need it, how you can be more effective and the different ways that it can work for you, or maybe you don't need it and just some marketing um, and storytelling tips for you. So educating and training is probably the most important thing that I've been doing recently. I've been on some great panels uh, with other leaders, people in the DNI space, really focusing on leadership and how you step out into your thought leadership. So if any of that is of interest to you or you're still trying to figure out where you fit in or where that fits into your business life, authors, been uh, working a lot with them, then stay connected. You can always find me on Tanya McKenzie PR on all social media platforms or Sand and Shores, all social media platforms. If all else fails, just Google me. So as we get out of here today and you head into your holiday season, whatever that might be, be intentional. Be intentional about the things you do. Don't just, you know, let life happen to you. You go out there and make life happen for you. Um, and if nothing else, I guess we will see you uh, next week. Same bat channel, same bat time. Yeah. All right, you guys, take it easy. Have an amazing holiday, and we'll see you soon. Tell me if you got.